snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. I'd say it wasn't the result we wanted, it wasn't the result we were after. Um, but uh, Caleb Plant is a very, very, very good fighter. Great hands. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm proud of Vincent, he's stuck in there. Um, I believe the ref did a very good job. The ref, refs don't get a lot of um, uh, compliments in this game, but I think the ref did a very good job with the stoppage. He stopped it exactly the right time. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of credit to. Um, Caleb, um, I think Vince needs to probably move down in weight. Um, if, I, if I saw how easily he made weight this time, I think he could be a real force in the middleweight division. So um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Let him have a bit of time off. He deserves that, and um, you know, come back stronger. Thank you, Scotty White from Welcome Back Sports. Um, Vegan Boots. Most of his fights has been outside the U.S. perimeter. How is this um, spirit like coming over here to the U.S. for such a big fight in Caleb's backyard? Um, I mean, I think you could see it, and you know, he, he, there was no quit in him. Um, he didn't want it to stop. He didn't want it to. But we all knew, kind of in the corner, it was time to call it a day. And, and, and I think if it had gone another ten seconds, we would have probably thrown in the towel. I did mention it to the uh, to the trainer. I said, Look, get the towel ready. Um, he's taking too much. He's 24 years old. He can come again. Um, um, but yeah, I don't think he was phased. To be honest, he's, he, he didn't get phased. Um, it's a nice crowd here. It's not like uh, I mean, I mean it's not it's not like a, a scary crowd. Uh, you know, I've gone to to Mexico where you get fifteen thousand people <laughs> chucking bottles down at you, or, or, or you go to England where it's uh, you know a load of football hooligans. Um, it's a really nice crowd, really lovely city, um, and uh, had a really nice time actually. <laughs> Apart from the result. <laughs> what did Caleb tell uh, Vincent? Um, I know he went over to him and he said a few things to him. What did you tell him? Um, I just think he said, look, you can come again. Um, thanks for a great fight. Uh, you know, there's a few, a bit of needle uh, in the build up. I think, um, I don't think, I don't think Caleb, you know, the trash talking, he's, he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. And I think he just said, look, you know, I respect you as a fighter. And, um, you know, look, for me anyway, I think the, the main thing is that both guys, go home to their families and, and they're safe. That's, you know, for me, that's the main thing. Why do you think both fighters was in the weeds so early when the presses with the track? Um, I know there's a story uh, about uh, the water being imported and, and not really trusting the food over here. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. I, I, I think that's just a story. Um, I think it was probably said from someone in our team. Um, definitely not me, um, but uh, no, no. We, <laughs> yeah. But you know, often you know, we travel to, to, to let's say Russia or wherever, where we you know, quite often we do bring our own water because you know, you don't know what someone might put in it, you know, yeah. doping or, or so that like was that. a but we trusted the water fully here. Um, <laughs> large scales, women's sports media. Um, it appeared that Vincent was coming in with a strategy to just get Caleb to to maybe punch himself out a little bit in the beginning. Um, but then both fighters became more efficient with their punches. Was that was that a part of the strategy to get him to, to punch more and to wear him out? Uh, yeah, you, you got it right. Um, the, for the, the the strategy was the, to, to, to tag the body uh, for the first four rounds. Um, you know, hopefully, have him slow down. I think he slowed down marginally for like round six and seven, but then he got a second wind and it was. Uh, foot down to the pedal and um, over. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think Vince did a really, you know, coming out here and, you know, he's only 24 years old. He's turned pro at 16, never had any amateur fights, so he's, he's still learning. Um, I think he can come back from this, yeah. drop down to middleweight, and, uh, and um, you know, I think <laughs> he's weighing in way too easy. Uh, Ryan O'Hare, the Ring Magazine. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you know that uh, Vegan Boots wants to go down to, to 160 pounds. 
Um, what, what are the specific troubles that he's having, um, specifically 168, and what would benefit from him moving down um, to being just 24? Um, I mean, he hasn't said it specifically. I haven't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not putting him on a diet. No, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's more. It's, uh, look, I think he'll just carry, you know, a lot more power and that weight. Um, I think uh, the guys will be more his size. I think I see it quite clearly um, in the ring. Um, you know, the aesthetics. Um, he was a lot bigger uh, than Caleb. Uh, naturally bigger. Um, yeah, I think I think you definitely have an advantage of size and power going down the middle to middleweight, and I don't think you'd even struggle to make middleweight. Are we uh, going to see more uh, super series coming up? Yeah, we got the final March twenty first. Um, but and outside we, of that, yeah, we're gearing up for season three. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. will start September October time. Do you know what weights? Yeah, so me and my brother sort of um, we've given up calling weights. Uh, no, we haven't given up. No, because <laughs> whenever we're like, oh, that'll be a great weight, like, oh, middleweights, then suddenly like loads of stuff happens and it just doesn't become possible. So it's like a, a, a dream that just doesn't come through. Um, so we'll, we'll start calling that closer to the time. I've got a few in mind, but then, you know what, you know boxing can change very, very quickly. But I like, lightweights would be great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of weight classes I quite like at the moment. Mm. Uh, how, how soon, I, I guess, does that timetable look for you guys? Um, September, October time. So we'd start getting weights together May, June time, mm. and then spend the whole summer signing people up. Yeah. Have you you zeroed it into the two weights that you would more than likely like? No, I've, I've got a few in my head. But yeah. But yeah. light weights obviously is a preferred light one. Light weights, middle yeah. weights. Middle weights. Yeah, super middles again. Mm. You know, sort of a lot of interesting weights out there. Heavyweight doesn't fancy. Oh, I love it. You know, spare a couple of billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah that would be a dream, right? That would be a dream. But uh, <laughs> it's a tough one to do. Vegan boots. Um, him standing up in the corner made a vertical. Tough. The floor is yours, chat. Congratulations. Appreciate you, Ray. Man, legendary night. Legendary night for the city. Um, Vincent, super tough competitor, a lot of heart. I knew he wasn't gonna just lay down. I knew he was coming to, uh, you know, fight and try to win that belt. But um, I did what I said I ought to do. I did what I said I would do. I said I would um, go out, box him, start to embarrass him, punish him, and then stop him. And that's exactly what we did. So um, I I'm excited and. Uh, it was an honor. I got to have my grandfather by me the whole night. He got to walk out with me. He got to get up in the ring with me. And um, he's one of my, he might be my biggest idol. Um, when he was a kid, when he was a kid, his parents brought him to a grocery store and said, if he works for you, can he stay in the back of this grocery store? And that's what he did. And he grew up to own multiple grocery stores, post office, I mean, he made a way out of no way. And uh, I seen that at an early age, and that's exactly what I did. I made a way out of no way. And um, has supported our, our family every holiday, every birthday. Everybody's at their place. He buys the food. I mean, he has been a rock in our family. Rock. The rock in our family. And um, my father, he sacrificed so much and has worked so hard. And I had two strong men in my life that I knew man, I want to be just like these guys. And that's, these are the two men who instill that hard work in me and that, you know, motivation to, uh, you know, go out and get it. And that's what we did tonight. Glad she's for the champion. Champ. Pedro Justice from IMO4 TV. Now, after such a spectacular performance that you put on tonight, I know everybody in here is thinking, who's next, David Benavidez or Canelo Alvarez? Man, I wanna, I wanna unify. I wanna unify. I wanna, I want that fight with David Benavidez. When he won that fight against Ronald Graville, he got dropped by Ronald Graville too. But uh, when he won that world title against Ronald Graville, I was standing at the bottom of the stairs. And before he could even get to the bottom of the stairs, I was standing there asking him, "When are we gonna make this happen?" And I don't see too many other fighters standing at the bottom of the stairs right after somebody wins, saying, "Hey, when are we gonna get it cracking?" And um, so I've been wanting that. I've been asking for that. I've been pushing for that. I know we're both young in our career. I know they're trying to build us up. 
and turn that into a mega fight. But um, I'm a fighter, and uh, there ain't no sense in waiting, if you ask me. So we can get a crack on whatever. How could I not? <laughs> the whole city came out. It was a legendary night for the city. I mean, I don't even have to tell you guys. Look at, look at everybody that came out. Just 20 fights, first time fighting in Nashville, and we look at the crowd that came to support us. So uh, I think uh, we're going to be back real soon, and we're going to tell the whole building now. So uh, I, I'm, I'm honored that everybody came out. Um, I may reside in Vegas, but as long as Caleb Plant has a world title, that means Nashville has a world champion. And uh, I'm gonna be here for a long time, so Nashville's gonna have a world champion for a long time, so get used to it. Talk about that moment where you uh, melt something to big boots and got the crowd really going. Bloom a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know, you in for it. I told you, you about to run into a brick wall. I ain't nothing to play with. And um, so I take this serious. Anybody who knows me know that I, knows I do not play around with this. This is my entire life. You know, I have sacrificed everything for this. And um, I'm still at the base of the mountain. I'm not at the peak. I keep telling y'all I'm not the hunted. I'm still hunting. My sights are set high. And um, with just 20 fights and only 27 years old, I'm really just getting started. What do you think this fight can do for Nashville, building it as a fight city? Man, um, can do a lot. You know, as you see, like I said before, everybody who came out, we had some great local talent on the card. A couple of guys, uh, you know, a couple, you know, local boxers who didn't get to get on this time, but next time we stuck around, I'm sure we'll be able to get them on the card. And um, yeah, that is, uh, we're gonna turn Nashville into a fight city, so. Yeah, does it surprise you at all that, that throughout the entire course of the fight, with what you were throwing, you didn't land a single knockdown with, with, with Fike and Boots' durability. Did that, did that surprise you at all? Um, not really. Like I said, I knew he was coming to fight. Uh, I knew that he wasn't just going to lay down. You know, he's got a tight, high guard, so, you know, some of those hard shots was um, may have bounced him around a little bit, but it was kind of hitting him on the arms. Um, a couple times I knew I had stumbled him, but I didn't want to rush anything, um, you know, force anything. I knew it was going to come. I told y'all before that this fight wouldn't go 12 rounds. Um, thus far, everything that I've said has been written in stone. And um, everything that my naysayers have said has been written in sand. And um, I told you what I'd do to Porky Medina. They said he knocked me out. It wasn't close. I told you I'd go in there and beat Jose Uzgatagi with the whole world bending against me, coming off a year layoff, a broke hand, no tuna fight. I went in there and I dominated him. And I dropped him twice. We knew what I was going to do to Mike Lee. And I said tonight, it wouldn't go 12 rounds. Everything I said, you could take it and cash it. Champ, super congrats on winning today. Leading up to this fight, I know it was a big deal for you to fight in your backyard. Boxing is your full-time sport, but, the, but tonight you was a part of the demolition team. What did you see early through the first few six rounds that allowed you to spark up Keegan Boots so much with the volume of punches you was putting out? Um, you know, I think a lot of people go in there with such a strict game plan. This is what we have to do. We have to do this in this round. We have to do this in you know, that in this round. And, um, but what a lot of fighters lack is the ability to make adjustments. And um, I think we made great adjustments. I knew when to put my foot on the gas. I knew when to let off. Um, I knew when to faint. I knew when, I stick, when to stick to my jab and when to let my combinations go. And um, a couple rounds before I stopped him, um, I could see that uh, his wheel was starting to break. And I knew in a couple rounds I'm gonna jump on him and uh, he ain't gonna have the heart to keep me off of him. That's what I did. You was getting off first a lot. Was that the game plan? You'll start the round, you know, for over a minute or so, you'll really um, increase the tempo of your punches. Was that to break Keegan Boots down, or did you see him breaking down and grading? As uh, I, I seen him breaking down and grading as the fight went along. And, um, you know, everyone knows me for my defense, my footwork, but if you look at the Jose fight, the Mike Lee fight tonight, you can really see my offense really picking up, starting to come along. There was about five or six fights there. You know, when I first came in, I was knocking everybody out. And uh, then there was about five or six fights where I started to develop a lot of hand injuries. And, you know, I didn't really want to speak on it because, you know, a lot of people make excuses. Um, but, you know, for the Jose fight, Mike Lee fight, and this fight, my hands have held up. And you see what type of damage that I've done in those fights. And uh, I think, you know, those hand problems are a thing of the past. Also, with my 
and rap God Don House. Can I get a round of applause for Don House? Keeping, keeping, the, uh, keeping the money maker safe. And uh, since we brought him in, there has been no issues. And I've also been doing a lot of hand strength, you know, strength exercises, make sure I'm keeping them nice and strong. And uh, like I said, I think those hand injuries are a thing of the past. So, you know, for all these people saying I can't crack, you know, ask these last three guys. So. Now, uh, Caleb, we know that uh, David has a, a mandatory. Yeah. And after that, you know, do you want to wait it out or do you want to get back in and be active? What do you mean? Well, he has a fight. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. obviously, a fight between you and him, it's going to take a while. There's going to need promotion and build up, you know, or are you okay with waiting out a few months, not staying active? Um, I'm not waiting on anybody. That's a fight that I want, but I'm a world champion. I'm a world-class fighter. I have my own path, my own career, and I don't have to sit and wait on the shelf for anybody. I'm the best 168 pounder. Listen to me. David, Benef David Benavidez had a fight that was this close with Ronald Graville. He's a C-plus fighter. He also got dropped by Ronald Graville. What if I had a close fight like that with Ronald Graville? I would never hear the end of it. What if I got dropped by Ronald Graville? I would never hear the end of it. Then you got Callan Smith who gets booed in his hometown by getting a bad decision against a 5'9", John Ryder, a guy who's 5'9". Callan Smith is like 6'15". <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he has a fight this close in his hometown where his home crowd's booing him. Then you have Billy Joe Saunders. Who did he win the world title against, Marcos? You don't know. What about the last guy that he fought where he had a, a, a bad showing against his uh, U.S. debut? Who did he fight there? Okay. But you're a boxing guy. You know boxers, but you don't know who they are. So these three other champs are having tough fights and bad showings against guys that they're supposed to be killing. And you got a guy like Jose who's supposed to kill me, and I dog walk him. But I'm not the best 168-pounder walking God's green earth. Okay, so... Those, I'm, that, that, that's not, I'm not, I'm not getting big headed. Those are facts. Did, that, did they have, all three of those guys have bad showings against guys they were supposed to kill? Yes? Yes? Say for your video. Yes. Yes. Have you seen me have a close fight yet? Against quality guys? Maybe that's for a reason. Because, you know, we can all sit here and say all the things that sound good, but there's no lies in boxing. When that bell rings, the truth's going to come to light. So make sure you pay attention to the truth. Don't listen just to the hype. Have you gotten an indication that that is the plan? It's gonna be the next fight? Uh, I have no indication. You know, boxing, they, they want you to fight guys and you know, fight tough guys and then you get a fight and then you ain't five minutes out of the ring and they already asking you who you fight next. You know what I'm saying? So you know who I wanna fight. You know what I wanna do. I said it loud and clear. I'm not gonna keep saying it. You know who I wanna fight. You know I want a unification match. At the same time, I'm not going to sit on the shelf and wait for nobody. I'm the man to be. So. You think it'll be that much tougher after this performance? Uh, I, I have to be honest, you know, watching you box, I told you this in, uh, at the MGM, you're one of the most entertaining fighters out there because you actually go out there and box and put in the work and you're not standing out on the ropes and just um, stalling time round for round. So you think it'll be difficult for people to want to get in the ring with you? or the matchmakers to find you a quality opponent? I'm not sure, I'm a fighter. So uh, matchmakers make matches, fighters fight. I, all I can do is push for them. All I can, I can, I can sit here and tell you who I wanna fight, but it takes two to dance. And um, there's also people who, who make those fights happen. So I'm a fighter, I only have 20 fights. I don't get to just pick and choose when and where I fight. I have to say so, but I also have a team around me. So um, I can't speak for no other man. The only man I can speak for is myself. You know, you know what I want? I want big fights. I want tough guys. This guy was ranked number three in the world. Number one, and two, number one is vacant. Number two is vacant. Vincent was ranked number three in the world, the IBF. That's the belt that we fought for. He was my mandatory. If I didn't fight him, I would be stripped of my world title. That would be silly of me to do. I fought my mandatory. I won in fashion. And I'm ready for whoever's next. Louis, Lawrence Hill, Blue Sports Media. How pleased is Fox with PBC and Nashville having them tonight? Um, you know, I think it speaks for itself. You know, the, the crowd came out. Nashville uh, really came out for Caleb, and um, I think Caleb showed that there's a new franchise in town. It's Caleb Plant. And Caleb, I know that this might seem like um, maybe a far fetch because it's a zone fighter, but Canelo doesn't have an opponent yet for for May. 
you know, that, that's something I, I would imagine would interest you very, very much. How far is May away? <laughs> I don't know, could you? How far is May away, though? Uh, we're in February, March, April, May. So, so that means take half a month off after a three and a half month camp and then go right back to work, right? Mm -hmm. Just so they can try and get me when I'm overworked. So you control the narrative, then you control the media. Mm -hmm. They make an offer knowing that I just fought. So when we say no, then it seems like I'm ducking them. You control the narrative, you control the media. Don't let them fool you. Like I said, yeah, I'm a world champion. I'm a world-class fighter. I'm on, I'm on my time. This is CP time. So, <laughs> that means Caleb Plant time. Just like <laughs> so, uh, you know, they, they want me to take half a month off and then get right back to work after three and a half month camp and, you know, six weeks of pre-camp. Like I said, don't don't be fooled. So we're gonna get to him. He got fights left on his contract. Why doesn't he go uh, beat Billy Joe and Callum and become unified? And then I'll whoop on David and I'll become unified and then we can fight for all the marbles. That sounds a little better to me. Mm. Do you expect uh, to have at least, do you expect to have one more fight for the end of the year? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, fight at least one more time this year and then right again at the beginning of next. and. Um, Keep it moving. Hit a milestone tonight, 20 and 0. Um, legendary night, like I said. Uh, get back, take a little bit of time off. Everybody knows that I'm in. The, um, I work year round, though. I stay. I stay disciplined. I stay close to weight. Um, I'll be ready to fight, but that don't mean that I'm gonna jump in before it's time. Uh, Ryan Hare, Ring Magazine. Do you think it'd also be helpful, um, you know, as a fighter, to promote yourself on social media and you know uh, call out people that way? So like I got a lot of attention because they calling me. So, you know, I'm not just gonna hop on social media and act a fool and act crazy just so I can, you know, get an opportunity. Um, you know, there was a time where I was calling out guys because it was hard to get fights. I needed opportunities, but like I said, I'm the champ now. So, it sounds like I'm the one getting calls now. Um, so I'm just I'm gonna do me. That's why I did to get here, and that's what I'm gonna do to stay here. So. Last question, any more? Uh, this question kind of twofold. So we know who you want to fight. We, we, I'm not going to ask you who Don't you want to fight. Now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not going to ask you who to fight. Hey, I like hats. Yeah. How can I get one of those? <laughs> that's, that's the first one. I got uh, oh, 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 nice. Appreciate that, oh, you. man. Uh, you got a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, I like chains. Yeah. <laughs> you got to take what's coming with it. <laughs> I don't want to change. I don't want to change. But um, secondly, coming into tonight, you don't lack any confidence, clearly. Um, but, I mean, you're coming to your hometown, second title defense. Wife sang the national anthem. Killed it too. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. Round of applause for JP. Yeah. 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 With all of that, every, of course, everybody in the crowd is here to see you. Yeah. Um, with all of that going on, all the emotions going through you, with everything you've been through in the last few years, um, did you have any nerves before you walked down that aisle, or was it just business as usual? I mean, it's business as usual, but you can't. No fighter can say that they don't stand in that tunnel and, and you know feel some type of emotion, whether it's butterflies or nervousness. But you know it, it's world class fighters and, and, and real champions who can take that and use it for fuel. You know I've been through. You know I'm the type of person that the pressure's not gonna break me. It just it just adds to to uh, you know what I'm gonna go out there and do. So champions can can work through anything. All right, thank you very much to the media. Greatly appreciate it. Congratulations to Caleb Plant. 20 and 0, 12 knockouts, and still the super middleweight champion of the world. Nashville, stand up for your world champion.